everyone, Daniel Kerr here. Um, it is, um, okay, first off, is I'm inside of my lab, and it's really, really hot in here. Plus, I took my uh, dose of niacin today, so um, flushing, a little bit sweaty, no big deal. I want to talk to you about microdosing today. I want to talk to you about um, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, everybody who watches my channel knows. Uh, my channel is Emerging Biology, by the way, and you can go to emergingbiology.com and check that out, or... Look up uh, facebook.com slash emerging biology and you can find my, my stuff on Facebook. Um, anyone who knows me knows that I'm a, a Christian and that, uh, that I, am a, I love Jesus. So, um, but they are also surprised to know that I um, own a company that researches the microdosing of psychedelics. Okay, And so I guess one of the questions that comes up often is how do I reconcile um, microdosing and Christianity, right? Now, first off, um, I just want to open with, uh, you know, the Bible says that, um, that you should not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but you should be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and then you'll know what the will of God is, okay? Now, I am not, um, I'm not advocating uh, the use of drugs for recreation. Uh, microdosing involves taking tiny, tiny amounts of uh, psychedelic materials, um, in a way that you shouldn't actually experience a head change. You won't actually be able to feel it. If you do feel it, you're supposed to dial it back a little bit, right? Now, um, in relation to um, renewing your mind, that is one of the, the key benefits of psychedelic um, materials in the brain is that they do cause new um, brain growth. They, they cause uh, neurogenesis in the hippocampus, but also they cause neuroplasticity to take place, right? So if you look at an EEG um, of somebody who has, um, um, well, it doesn't even matter. Uh, you can look at somebody who's, who's in their midlife or late life, and you can see um, when they're performing different activities, brushing their teeth, morning routine, um, making dinner, you know, these different things that they do on a day-to-day -day basis, you can see the same areas of the brain lighting up, um, basically showing that they have imprinted this way of doing things over the years and they're set in their, their ways. Um, when they start to experience just a little bit of uh, different um, psychedelic trip tryptamines and things like that, phenethylamines, it activates the serotonin 2A receptors, which is the 5-HT2A receptors, and it causes new, um, it basically like a dissociation. This person is, is able to step outside of themselves and observe the same action that they've been doing for decades and look at it in a different light, and you'll see new areas of the brain lighting up. They're basically dissolving their rut that they've gotten stuck in, and they're finding new ways of doing things, right? And, and this is very, very uh, beneficial to many people. All right. So um, psychedelics are agonists of the 5-HT2A receptors. Um, SSRIs, okay, uh, which are basically antidepressants, uh, they down, down regulate postsynaptic serotonin 2A uh, receptors. And you'll find that depressed and suicidal people tend to have more receptors than your typical patients, right? And uh, so microdosing is... Um, has been, I'm, I don't want to say has been proven, it has been clinically suggested and has been verified in, with thousands of anecdotal reports that it alleviates um, depression, anxiety, PTSD, various types of stress disorders, right? So how is this uh, possible, right? Well, paradoxical downregulation of 5-HT2A receptors can be observed um, with several of the serotonin 2A agonists, right? So basically it, it acts like... Um, it seems to act adaptogenic. It seems to um, increase serotonin 2A receptor modulation when needed and decrease it when needed and bring you back to a point of baseline, right? And this is all without a head change actually taking place. So, so it actually, you know, it's interesting because these are drugs of abuse, as they say, right? But no one can argue that, uh, that um, opiates, opioids are drugs of abuse as well, right? Heroin, um, opium, morphine, okay? The interesting thing is, is that your body produces these drugs, okay? Your body produces endogenous morphine, which is actually what um, endorphins means, right? And these drugs 
uh, revolutionized in, in proper set and setting. They revolutionized medicine. They revolutionized surgery and pain management. They revolutionized all kinds of things that um, prior to the advent or, or the use of these opiates were uh, caused major, major trauma to the body and to the brain, right? And so, um, you know, they are the most addictive drugs on earth, but they still have their place medically to the point where the World Health Organization considers them one of the top medicines, right? Uh, the list of essential medicines, okay? Now, in a microdosing setting, it's, it's no different. You can take a whole bunch of psilocybin mushrooms and you can have a what many would, would call a mystical experience. I'm not arguing that that's a good thing, okay? I can, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing or a good thing, all right? I, I know that it's a magical experience and that it, it could be considered sorcery, okay? There's that, all right? When you look in the New Testament, you see uh, whenever sorcery is mentioned, the words are pharmakeos, pharmakeia, and pharmakeion, right? I'm not advocating drug use, okay? But in a microdose setting, you're not actually getting high. You're basically just experiencing the benefits of neuroplasticity and neurogenesis. And when people are um, depressed, they've been depressed for many, many years. Um, a lot of times depression, the onset of depression or anxiety disorders, they come on in your, you know, in, in your teens, 14, 15 years old, your brain's not developed at that time. It's not able to handle that type of, of a thing, right? Um, properly, not in a mature way. Your brain hasn't been developed. Nevertheless, decades of experiencing this anxiety and depression has caused, like I was talking about with the EEG, the same areas of the brain to light up when you're experiencing these symptoms and it causes a rut. Your brain basically defaults back to these modes and um, handles these things in the same way over and over and over again, right? It's really hot in here. I just want to apologize for my sweat one more time. It's, it's about 100 degrees in this room. Nonetheless, um, so... What happens when you experience microdosing is this neuroplasticity takes place. Your body, your, your brain is able to dissociate from itself just a tad, observe these behaviors. But now you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, right? And your brain is more mature and, and, and now is finding new ways of handling these uh, impulses of anxiety and depression, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, these things, right? I want to go over some of the... Um, some of the functions of the serotonin 2A receptors, all right? Um, physiological processes mediated by the receptor include, but are not li limited to, uh, central uh, CNS neuronal excitation, all right? So uh, this is probably what causes the psychedelic effects, all right? There are uh, some behavioral effects, learning, um, anxiety, pro uh, nociception, okay? It also uh, deals with your smooth muscle contraction in your bronchi and gastrointestinal tract, all right? Uh, it's, <laughs> it's kind of been shown that, uh, that taking microdosing of uh, doses of psychedelics is actually good for the gastrointestinal tract and um, helps uh, the gut-brain axis, all right? Uh, vasoconstriction and vasodilation, depending on set and setting, depending on where your body's at, or an another indicator, because it performs these two opposite functions at different times, another indicator that uh, we might be experiencing an adaptogenic effect, okay? Um, it causes platelet aggression, aggregation, right? Uh, platelets, it causes your blood to clot, all right? It's interesting. Um, activation of the serotonin 2A receptor with DOI, which is a powerful, 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 long-lasting hallucinogen, uh, produces potent anti-inflammatory uh, effects in several different tissues. All right. Now, the interesting thing enough is that that includes the cardiovascular system and your gut. Okay. Now, you don't want to microdose in DOI, right? Well, I, I don't know that any, anyone ever has, okay? But other serotonin 2A agonists like LSD, right, have potent anti-inflammatory effects um, against TNF-alpha-induced uh, inflammation, which is cytokine levels, uh, decreased cytokine levels, which is decreased cortisol, decreased stress, decreased inflammation, has been observed when under the influence of LSD, all right? I assume psilocybin, LSA, DMT, these others, probably the same, okay? Probably the same. Maybe just not enough uh, clinical evidence at this time, okay? Activation of the serotonin 2A receptor in the hypothalamus causes increases in hormonal levels of oxytocin, 
Okay, so more love, prolactin, ACTH, corticosterone, and renin. Okay, these all perform different functions. I'm not going to get into all of them, but increased oxytocin levels increases your propensity to feel attachment to another person, to feel love for your family, all right, to feel uh, a general sense of well being um, with the world, and specifically uh, to feel unified with your tribe or fam family unit. Okay, people who are experiencing loneliness, people who are experiencing a bit of isolation. Isolation, like isolation disorders, can probably benefit from increased levels of oxytocin, okay? It also performs a role in memory and learning, okay, which is not surprising since it does cause neuroplasticity. Um, evidence for, like, a, uh, increasing the action of acetylcholine, for instance, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't been able to find any. I haven't really looked that hard. I'm probably going to get into more of this as t time goes by, all right? Serotonin 2A receptor activity stimulates um, phospholipase C activity, which in turn promotes the release of uh, diacylglycerol, right, DAG, and inositol triphosphate. Okay, here's the interesting thing about inositol triphosphate is it has been studied as a potential performance-enhancing drug, all right? Myo inositol, I try, uh, I try pyrophosphate, ITPP, um, definitely increases uh, delivery of oxygen to the cells, increases your, uh, your um, hand-eye coordination, um, stimulates uh, motor neurons. So that's probably where microdosing psychedelics um, causes an increase in act uh, uh, athletic ability, which has been shown to occur. Um, I know that a lot of extreme athletes who are surfers and skateboarders and snowboarders um, experiment with microdosing. I know many of them personally. I know what their regimens are, all right? I'm not going to bust these people out because they're professional athletes, but they definitely use microdosing to increase their prowess and their stamina. The fact is, is that um, a tiny amount of LSD in the system is, is absolutely undetectable with your typical urinalysis or hair tests, hair follicle tests. So these people are never going to be found out for this, but they definitely in use it as a performance enhancing drug. Okay. It's probably because of the uh, chain that leads to the production of IP3 and acetyl triphosphate. Okay. There's evidence that inositol triphosphate receptors play an important role in the induction of plasticity, right? There's that word again, in cerebellar Purkinje cells. That is probably the impetus for neurogenesis in the adult hippocampus that has been observed with psilocybin specifically. My company is microdosing.tech, and um, it is... Uh, well, you can go there and you can see that I have tryptamine plants um, infused in honey. And uh, uh, it definitely is combined with intellect tree, which is Jishmati. It is combined with Yohimbi and niacin to give you the flush, according to the Paul Stamets uh, neurogenesis protocol. And that also prevents my product from being abused um, in a psychedelic setting, right? So you basically take a spoonful of honey and it gives you a microdose. You do that once every other day or so, once every three days. Anyway, I love you guys. I hope that some of this information was beneficial to you. And um, if it was, just uh, leave a like and a comment. And um, I love you all. Have a great summer. Thank you.